Well, welcome to this session of RD Works Learning Lab. The subject we're going to look at today is basically mirrors. But associated with mirrors, we've got metals and reflectance. Now, I've chosen to look at mirrors because I noticed that when I was doing some work on one of my recent sessions, my puny 38 watt output laser is actually only giving me 30 watts of usable power down at the cutting surface. Now the only thing between that cutting surface and the laser are a series of mirrors and one lens. So I'm losing 8 out of my 38. It's a good thing for me to try and understand just where and how I'm losing that energy. So although my goal is to try and make sure that I get more of my laser power down at the work surface, I've got an idea that this could take two or three sessions to get through everything that I've got to do. Now before we can start talking and looking at mirrors themselves we need to understand the nature of the beast that we're trying to work with. That's our laser beam. Now here we've got a picture of the electromagnetic spectrum. It's very nicely summarized and I've nicked this picture from somewhere else. But as you can see right in the middle of the picture there's a very very narrow band of sensitivity that the human being has via the eye to visible light. You can't feel visible light, you can only see it. Once we move up to the MOVE end of the spectrum, as you can see, the waves start getting closer together, the energy density starts getting higher, and we move out of that area that we can see into the ultraviolet region. But your body can still feel it. If you stand under a tanning lamp for any length of time, you'll very quickly blister up and go red. So your skin is actually still sensitive to ultraviolet light. And as we move out of the ultraviolet region into the X-rays and gamma rays, um, those will have serious effects on human tissue. Let's move to the other end of the visible light range. And as you can see, we move out of the red range into something called infrared. Now, we're not going to go and worry about what's happening down at the far end of that radio waves and TV waves and things like that. Although it's only of passing interest to you, our infrared waves that are generated by our laser sit at about the F of infrared. 10.6 microns is the wavelength. Not that you can imagine that, not you need to imagine that, but what we do need to understand is what infrared is. How dangerous is it? Why are there big notices plastered all over our laser machine which warns us that laser light is dangerous? I'm going to now walk through to my workshop and on the way we're going to take a look at a few things. I decided to stop and get some refreshments. <clears throat> oh, my cup is hot. When I put my hands around the outside here I can feel the warmth of the cup right out here. The heat is travelling away from the cup and that's infrared heat. It's the heat that you can feel from a convector, from a flame, from a fire, from the sun. Now this is very unfocused infrared heat and it's certainly not dangerous. I haven't got to wear goggles, I haven't got to you know put air defenders on or do anything silly like that. And here we've got another very common piece of equipment. It generates heat in the form of very wide tube of heat. This is still infrared heat and as you can see even though I've got the some maximum setting it's so getting a bit uncomfortable but I can put my hand there and I don't get burned. This is infrared heat which is being directed by a stream of air so it's being slightly focused. Right now we're going to ramp things up a notch or two and I think most people will recognize this as a paint stripper gun. We'll just let this warm up for a few seconds and now I ask you whether or not you'd stick your hand in front of that. Let's put a piece of card in front of it. We'll get right up against the card. Uh, we can just about think about setting fire to it. Certainly scorch the surface. Now this paint stripper has actually got 1600 watts of energy and I would say that at least 1200 watts of that is coming out the front here in the form of heat. 1200 watts 
That's a lot of energy. And look, I can still put my hand in front of it because the energy has dissipated in the air very, very quickly. I'm now about a foot away and it's just starting to be uncomfortable. But that's what a thousand or twelve hundred watts of energy is doing. It's heating my hand up a foot away, but the beam of energy is what? Inch and a half diameter? So if I was to do an energy calculation, I'd probably find the energy density is not very, very high. So we've seen what 1200 watts of energy can do to this card. It can scorch it when I'm right against it. We already know from many experiments that I've only got 30 watts of energy. I might have about 35 watts of energy coming out of here. Now the beam of light that comes out here, apart from the fact that it's straight, is just like that piece of wire. It travels across there without breaking up, without sending light in any other direction, because it's what they call a coherent beam. It's a tube of light without any container. So what we do, we would just fire, fire our laser beam at this for a moment. We'll give it a few seconds. I'll pulse the machine. Well, in fact, I won't. I'll hold the pulse button on. And there we go. You can see what it does to that card. I think common sense will tell you that you wouldn't want to put your hand in that gap there while there was a laser beam running there. Now I have to admit to being stupid on one occasion and I did have my hand in there doing something and I accidentally pushed the pulse button and finished up with a, um, a mark in the centre of my palm. I didn't burn a hole through it because the laser beam only goes in about half a millimetre deep into the, into the skin before it's completely, um, before it's completely diffused. It hurt for a couple of hours, but within a couple of weeks, maybe less than that, it disappeared completely. It was just like an, an instant scar that it produced. <laughs> I'm not advocating that you go out and burn yourself, but what I'm saying is 30 watts of energy in six millimeters diameter is still a huge amount of energy per square millimeter, but it's still not deadly. And certainly, when the machine is running and the laser beam is going across here, do I need glasses on to watch it? It's as safe as that piece of wire, unless you put your hand in it, which I'm sure you're not going to do. So where does the danger come from? That's what we're going to get onto next. Now everyone knows that copper is a very good transmitter of heat, along with aluminium, gold, silver and even diamond. But let's just stay with copper for a minute. What do we imagine might happen when we fire a concentrated beam of heat energy into a very, very good conductor of heat? I'll leave you to think about that for a few moments while we carry on with the experiment. Right, now what I've got up here is a piece of copper. Now, as you can see, this piece of copper is totally non-reflective there. On this side, it is reflective. So I'm hoping that the beam is going to come down here and across here like this. We've already seen what the laser beam looks like as it comes out the bottom here. Let's see what happens when it gets reflected off that copper. Can you see a difference? That's because copper is extremely reflective doesn't matter about the shininess of the surface, it's extremely reflective because of its crystallographic structure. If I turn it round and use the shiny side, again no difference. How much energy is being reflected by that copper? And that just about climbed up to 27 watts. And I'm going to put the shiny copper on there. And I would say we've made it up to 29.2. Well this time, as you can see, we've got a sort of shiny material. Not a very good mirror, but it's reasonably shiny. And that's aluminium. 27.7. And finally, what I've got here is just a an ordinary piece of dull, tarnished, mild steel. If you watch carefully, 
you'll see that I'm generating something, a reflection just there. But when it comes to here, well, there's something there, but not a lot. The energy has dissipated very quickly. It's not only is it being absorbed by the surface, but when it's reflected, it's reflected in all sorts of directions, so there's no concentrated beam. The beam gets destroyed virtually when it hits this surface. To show you how dangerous it is, I don't know whether you can just, you can just about see my hand coming into the picture there. I'm going to pulse this, and in fact I'm going to hold the beam on. And it's a bit like putting my hand in front of a, a fire. I can feel a little bit of warmth, and that's why I am using a mild steel base plate as a bed plate. The reflections off it, nothing dangerous at all, plus the fact that it's also nicely magnetic, which you can use for all sorts of advantageous things. So why on earth they put an aluminium base plate on this machine is beyond me for people that are designing laser machines and understand how dangerous aluminium can be. We'll do the same thing for the mild steel. I'm reading a maximum there of about 17.5 watts, but that's right close down there. I don't think you'll catch me putting my hand and doing the same test with a reflection off of aluminium or with copper, because if I do it here, if I do it here, it hasn't lost its power even up there. So I certainly wouldn't put my hand in front of that. It's still a coherent beam. Aluminium reflections are dangerous. Copper reflections, even more dangerous. Mild steel, yeah, there's some energy there, but it's completely manageable. It's not dangerous by the time it hits you. Okay, let's take a few minutes and study the results that we got. 29.2 watts was the amount of power that I was firing at each one of these materials. Now, the dull copper transmitted 92.5% of the energy that was fired at it. Polished copper appeared to transmit 99.3, which is quite a phenomenal amount. Dull aluminium, well, that was 79.5%, still 80%. And polished aluminium was pretty good as well at 95%. And whereas the dull mild steel, well, that's a bit of a strange one because it's 59% or 60% where I measured it, you've only got to move a few centimetres away and that drops off dramatically. Coming back to this safety issue, the point I was making before is you don't need your safety glasses on to look at a laser beam side on. It's the same as looking at a torch beam. You know, until somebody shines the torch in your face, you can't, it's not dangerous. So provide you don't have any of these sorts of metal sitting around inside your machine which could pick up a reflection and fire it back at you, then there is no danger. Any of the materials that you're likely to put in your machine, like wood, glass, leather, paper, any of those sorts of materials are 100% absorbers of infrared energy and they won't reflect anything. Now I have got a further safety measure in the bottom of my machine in the form of a, um, a bed plate which is made of acrylic. Now as you can see this bed plate has got my pins in it which I use to raise the work off the table. It also has another advantage any excess energy that passes through the job tends to mark the surface of the acrylic and the energy that would be reflected is immediately absorbed by um, evaporation of the acrylic like I had here with a my, one of my test squares far too much energy then I can either raise the speed or lower the energy. Um, it's a telltale as well. Well now that we've seen that our infrared laser beam doesn't necessarily react to mirrors exactly the same way as visible light we need to investigate what sort of mirrors we could use to direct this beam and that will be the subject for the next video. So I hope you've come away from this session with a little bit more of a, a pragmatic understanding of the dangers, the specific dangers of an infrared laser beam. Most people wearing glasses these days will have polycarbonate lenses in their glasses. That will be 100% effective against an accidental flash from a laser reflection. If you want to play absolutely safe you can go out and get yourself a pair of cheap 
polycarbonate industrial safety glasses.